Welcome back to the show. Now, I am very happy because we have a great artist in the studio. I've been wanting to talk to him and meet him for quite a while now. So we have the one and the only Harris Hamid in the Heezy. Hello. How are you, brother? I'm good. Thank you for having me. Thank you for coming. Very much appreciate um, it. Seriously, I, I really appreciate what you've been doing. I think your voice is fantastic. Thank Tell you. me about uh, your experience where you actually went on The Voice. Yeah, so I went on The Voice back in 2016. Um, a very humbling experience. Um, you know, I've had a bit of a history with, you know, performing shows, um, like reality TV shows. And um, I was 16 years old at the time. Um, I didn't actually receive any turns, so nobody turned around. Um, so as I say, humbling. But the audition received a million views. And off the back of that, it's basically allowed me to be here today and, you know, pursue a career in music and have a really great fan base. Um, so yeah, that's, that's a bit of a nutshell of, of where I've been in regards to The Voice, but now I'm actively out here pursuing music as a career, so it's a... Uh... But how did you first get into music and singing? Like, what, what, when did you notice or when did everyone notice around you that like, yo, there's something special here? <laughs> <laughs> I think, do you know what, my dad, my dad is a vocalist. Um, not that he'll call himself one, but I mean, you know, he's got an incredible voice and I think he always pushed me. Um, he knew I enjoyed singing. You know, I remember my brother, um, you know, spinning round, dancing to Usher in the living room, you know, listening to Michael Jackson. He had a really cool U chain, um, <laughs> you know, and I think music always had a really prominent kind of um, space and place in our home. Um, and I think from there, I kind of pursued it and I really enjoyed doing it. And I wasn't great when I first started. Um, you know, I had to build and work and grow uh, and improve. And I had a lot of harsh realities, but I think, yeah, having such a supportive family and a strong foundation, um, you know, especially culturally and with the background and, and, you know, generally in life, I think that's uh, a very important thing. And it's, it's brought me here today, really, so. Well, but that's it. The UK is, is, is a haven of good music. Um, and you've got a lot of the Americans have always said that they've looked up to us as people from the UK and musicians in that sphere. Um, and sometimes we, we, we know it. And um, what, tell me about the experience of though doing stuff in London and the UK and the Mobos. Now that's big in the game, bro. Yeah, so, I mean, that was incredible. I mean, Mobo class, uh, Mobo unsung class. You know, just being recognised on that scale um, in the UK, you know, born and bred, shout out Leeds, O double one three, you know, the ends and just being on that platform and, and getting the recognition is very special. I went to London to study music journalism at BIM um, and, you know, my intentions were always to be recognised. I definitely feel like the UK has a very select kind of um, palette for music and for myself, I've kind of really decided to start branching out a little bit, hence why I'm here. I think, you know, the UAE and Dubai are very receptive to my music and the love and support I get from Dubai and the UAE is incredible. Um, so, you know, that's why I wanted to kind of take that step and come here and just expand and grow. Well, you're here, man, you're here. Thank you. We're going to put your socials up online so then everyone can Amazing. see and, and know where you're at. They can hear and just get experience and the taste of who you are, man. Amazing. I mean, appreciate you, King. I'm Thank looking forward you. to the performance a bit later. I'm looking forward to it. Right, Thank man. you so much. Cheers, brother. Nice. Now, the region's biggest literary festival came to an end, unfortunately, but our Katie went down to the Emirates Literature Festival to catch up with some of the top selling authors. Check it out. I'm down at the Emirates Airline Festival of Literature. As always, it's such an incredible event in the Dubai calendar. There's so much going on here, and I'm hoping to have a chat with a few of the speakers and maybe learn a thing or two. Shannon Chakraborty, who is a New York Times best-selling author. First of all, welcome to Dubai. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. Good. <laughs> How's your uh, lit fest been so far? Oh, it's been wonderful. I was really looking forward to coming here. I brought my family. Everyone's been so welcoming. Um, we've already bought too many books. Right, let's talk about your books because a New York Times best-selling title <laughs> is, is nothing to, be, you know, to turn your nose up yeah. at. What is it you think about your books that really resonate with the readers? 
I am still trying to work that one out because then it will help me write more successful future books. Um, but I think I, you know, I started with the Deva Bot trilogy, which is very much. Uh, in the line of political fantasy a la Game of Thrones. Uh, but I said it very deliberately in, in the Middle East and in the Islamic world because yeah. I wanted to write characters who were Muslim, being the heroes, being having you know their, our stories, their stories told. I think that resonated um, mm. very much with my early readership was mostly Muslim and they, like Muslim girls run Bookstagram. <laughs> and really? I feel like they, they were very supportive and it, it took off. And I think people resonated with it, with the family dynamics. And then I went, the book that hit the New York Times bestseller was different in many aspects because the character was older. The character is in her 40s. She's a retired pirate. She's a mother. She's dealing with the work-life balance, except the work-life balance is being a pirate in the 12th century <laughs> and being a mom. <laughs> um, and I think that also really resonated with people. And again, I wrote it. Uh, it takes place in you know the Arabian Gulf, and the characters are mostly Muslim, but it's also depicting the very cosmopolitan mm. world that was the Islamic world in the medieval era. Um, and I think, at least I hope so, I'm a history nerd at heart, and I really worked to get my research right so people felt like they were there right. at those times, traveling those same routes and being in those cities and all the little details. Um, and I think that resonated with people. Yeah. A lot of the people we speak to here, it's like, welcome to Dubai, how is it for you but it's home it is home yeah I grew up here so I've literally seen the city evolve and I've seen it becoming more and more diverse every day and uh, how all these festivals they are coming together and making life awesome here every day isn't it's, it uh, it know. is the place to be for we sure. are very lucky did you ever think that you would be performing your work at somewhere like the lip fest well yeah Good. Like, it's my city, first of all. Good. I actually grew up here, so I knew that eventually I'll be here. I have performed here a couple of years ago, but okay. with a group. But yeah, as a solo performer, it's the first time. So I'm really honored to do this. And uh, also representing my language here on an international platform. And uh, it's, it's, it feels great. First of all, welcome to Dubai. How are you? I'm very well, thanks. Thank you for having me. It's wonderful to be here. Have you been to Dubai before? It's my first time in the city. I've been here for about eight hours. Oh. And loving it already. It's been <laughs> wonderful. And the atmosphere is fantastic here. What a beautiful festival it is. It is fantastic. I'm so pleased that you're enjoying it because it really is like a staple in our calendar. And you can imagine it's gotten bigger and bigger each year. It's huge, yeah. but it's amazing to be part of it. And how's it been for you so far? Have you managed to get involved? It's been wonderful. I mean, the, th the thing that I'm really excited to, to, to see is, is the, all of the authors from around the world. Like, it's such a melting pot, and I'm getting introduced to books and people all the time already that I'm really excited to, to dig into later. So oh. I'm going to be going home with a big old bag of, of great books to read. And Your first ever book? Yes. Why did you decide that this was the subject? And I guess tell us what that subject is. Uh, so the book is about what we throw away. And uh, I guess the reason I was so, became so interested in it, when I say to people, oh, I'm writing a book, and they go, oh, that's so exciting. What are you writing about? And I'd say, I'm writing about a rubbish. And their face would just drop. Uh, understandably, it's yeah. not the most exciting subject matter. But a few years ago, um, you know, I'm not sure if you remember seeing the footage uh, of you know plastic in the oceans, and you see all these turtles with you know six-pack things around their neck, and uh, it just was one of those things that really gripped me. And I would be driving along, and I live in uh, rural England, and you'd see hedgerows filled with all of this litter that people were throwing out the window, and I just thought, gosh, you know, th how did we get here? You know, there's a yeah. there's a garbage patch in the Pacific Ocean that's five times the size of France. How? Like, where's it all coming from? And it kind of gripped me. And then at the same time, we saw in 2018, China, which for a long time had been the destination for a lot of what the things that we thought were being recycled, essentially shut its doors to the world's waste. And so you had all of these stories about plastic from the UK turning up in ditches in Malaysia or in Turkey. And it made me really aware of what was really happening to what we throw away. And it's, the answer is, most of the time, it's not what you think. So great to see all of the best authors right here in the city. But listen, if you want to check out more of our exclusive interviews, you can get access to our YouTube just by heading on over and subscribing at Dubai Worm TV.
Yes, and we're giving away prizes every single day. Vouchers for art experiences, dining experiences here and there, concerts, and even a PlayStation 5. <laughs> so make sure you head down to our Instagram page if you want to check it out. Um, there's also a hashtag on the screen. Uh, that's all for today. <laughs> Join us again tomorrow, though, as we get ready for the wedding season. We, that is. Uh, we've got planners, we've got designers, we've got experts right here on the show to help you plan your perfect day. Uh, all coming as promised. Now, as promised for tonight, it's time for the H, the H. It's time for that special performance. It's farewell from us. It's over to Harris and me. Good night. Yeah, I'll be, I'll be, yeah, yeah, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be your life, ah. even if you lose your way, ever in your darkest day, I'll stay, I promise you. I'll be your light in the darkest of times. Yeah, we all live for someone. I pray for the people, don't lose yourself in this game. Cause I live for someone much greater than I can explain. Yeah, yeah. You said it had meaning. You think you can see what's on my mind. What's on my mind. Even if you lose your way. Ever in your darkest day, I'll stay, I promise you. I'll be your light in the darkest of times. Yeah, we all live for someone. I pray for the people, don't lose yourself in this game. Cause I live for someone. I need something different, I know I can change this. Even if I put aside my pride How many wrong turns I took I just want to write this book If you're down, you know what's up And I just want to show you that No matter where you go, I'm there And I just want to let you know Even though I let you go I could never let you go Everything our lives been through Everything we're living through Even if you lose your way Ever in your darkest day, I'll stay, I promise you. I'll be your light in the darkest of times. Yeah, we all live for someone. I pray for the people, don't lose yourself in this game. Cause I live for someone much greater than I can explain. Yeah, yeah. You said it had meaning, you think you can see what's on my mind. What's on my mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah.